Hi folks, this is Ben from CarryPad.com. I've got the LG Revolution here. This is Verizon's third L uh, 4G smartphone, and I wanted to give you a look around the device. So it's probably hard to see at first because of this totally black packaging. Uh, this is very similar to what the HTC Thunderbolt came in, um, and I think what Verizon is deciding to do for pretty much all of their 4G smartphones. <clears throat> so if we pull the box open here, Again, pretty much all black. You can probably even hardly even see it, but there is an LG logo down here and an uh, embroidered uh, Verizon logo at the top here and LG Revolution on the side. It's a nice little box, but let's get inside. Finally got some real color in here and the device right here. So this is the LG Revolution. This is um, this device has a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon CPU. It's a 4.3 inch screen, just like the HTC Thunderbolt and I've got that here for some size comparison and the LG Revolution is just a few millimeters taller um, about the same thickness and definitely lighter feels like nearly half the weight that's probably uh, an overestimate but it does feel lighter oh probably because the battery's not in here yet so let's do that before we make any uh, any decisions about weight so quickly through the rest of the box We've got some documentation, USB to micro USB for charging and syncing. Uh, this is a wall charger with USB and the battery, which is important. So let's get that inside. And of course, got to have the satisfying screen peel off. Those are always fun. I always hate these pry covers because it always feels like you're going to break the phone. Uh, let's see, I think the SIM card may need to go in first. I've got a 4G SIM card right here. So let me give that a try. And that goes in like so, or maybe not like so. Okay, definitely like so. There we go. Alright, now, battery, get the back on. Now we'll feel the weight difference. Now they're a lot less different. Um, the LG Revolution does still still feel small, uh, lighter, but not not nearly as light as I thought it was before. So um, my mistake. Um, but yeah, they they do look fairly similarly sized, but the LG Revolution is a little bit taller, which you can probably see it. The tops are lined up right now. I'll line up the bottoms. You can see that the LG Revolution hangs over the top of the Thunderbolt a little bit. But again, both 4.3 inch. Um, screens at 800 by 480. Let's get the Thunderbolt off to the side there and run around the device real quick. I don't know how people are going to respond to this little this reflective uh, back stripe here. Um, when I saw this phone before I actually had it in my hands, I, I will admit I thought it was pretty ugly, but seeing it in person it's not so bad here. Uh, photos that I saw before made it look like this was uh, some sort of silver uh, metal color, but uh, now it looks more like sort of a glass or plastic and it's not so silvery it's got black underneath um, but it's just shiny because of the because of the material it's made out of um, hmm, I don't know I don't know how people are going to respond to that necessarily I don't think it's perhaps the most attractive thing but again it's not as, not as jarring as it was before but I'm not a fan of the fact that they loaded it up with a bunch of logos LG, Verizon, and 4G here but you know oh well if the phone works well the phone works well and people are going to use it because of that um, so let's run around the device real quick. On the top, we've got a 4.3 inch headphone jack, the lock and power button, and it looks like there's a little piece of plastic over that. Yes. Okay. On the right side, we've got volume rockers, 
HDMI uh, hatch. You've actually got to pull that open. I'm always wary about these sort of hatches because uh, they're held on by what seems to be, uh, I don't know, um, dental floss. It's about that strong generally. Uh, when I see people with phones that have these sort of hatches that get used often, uh, these things are usually broken off after a year or so of use. So hopefully that won't end up happening to this device. But anyway, that's micro HDMI right there, or D-type. On the bottom we've got nothing but a microphone, probably tough to see. Um, and right there is a little pry slot for to get the back cover off. On the left side there is nothing except for a your micro USB port under a hatch. And they've got these um, silver accents on the left and right there, so adding a little something to the device. On the front there is a speaker grill at the top. I can see two sensors up here which you probably won't be able to. Uh, these are likely ambient light and proximity sensors. And we've got a 1.3 megapixel camera front facing right there on the front. And nothing else except for your four Android buttons. And this the, the phone's um, very plasticky for the most part, but it does feel like this band around the outside may be metal. And actually down here it has sort of a brushed look to it, which is sort of neat but hard to tell. Um, I'm not even sure if that's metal or plastic. It feels like plastic, but the brushed look makes it look a little bit more, more metallic. And on the back here, uh, this is a 5 megapixel camera, lower resolution than the Thunderbolt's 8 megapixel camera, um, but as long as it takes good pictures, it takes good pictures. Um, the iPhone 4 has a 5 megapixel, ca me megapixel camera, which tends to take better pictures than uh, some 8 megapixel phones out there, so let's not judge it too quickly by its uh, megapixel count. Uh, it's got a single LED flash up here, and I see another mic on the back for noise cancellation, likely, and for video recording. So, with all of that said, let's fire up the device. So the real question with this phone is going to be, it's now one of three 4G phones, so that puts it immediately in the lineup of which 4G phone should I get. Um, as, as you've seen, I've had the HTC Thunderbolt for a little while, and um, I personally think that the phone is a little bit too big, um, even though it's it's a nice looking phone, um, and I like the stand on the back, uh, but this doesn't help things. Uh, this is a 4.3 inch screen, just as the Thunderbolt is, so um, in terms of size, there's, there's no real uh, difference there in terms of what I would recommend to people. So it's going to come down to performance and definitely battery life. There have been a lot of early reports of Thunderbolt having pretty low battery life on 4G, um, and of course the big screen doesn't exactly help that out. Um, so let's see, we've got the phone fired up here and it looks like it's in German, which is odd. Looks like it wants me to, oh. okay, it looks like it's communicating with Verizon right here and I have no idea why it's in German, but let's give it a minute and see what it does. I hope that that button means next. <clears throat> See right off the bat we've got an LED up here in the bezel, which is always nice for notifications. Hmm. So it's trying to make an emergency call of sorts. Okay, here we are to a desktop. Um, I see a Bing icon immediately, which makes me believe that this is going to be, um, yes, it's going to be Bing instead of Google, which some people are going to dislike uh, for your search. Of course, you can easily get around this with uh, any number of applications from the marketplace. Just install some search bar that does Google instead of Bing. You lose out on a couple of things, like being able to tap the search button. Um, and get directly to Bing. 
or get directly to Google instead of Bing, but um, it's not too big a deal. Um, you can still get all the great stuff like Google Maps, um, Google Navigation, pretty much anything that they offer right out of the marketplace. So before we go anywhere, let us find out how to change the language. So I'm working totally on icons here because I now know German. Um, let's see, where would that be? Here we go. English. Hooray. Okay. Now we can use the phone. All right. So, LG Revolution. Got it here. Clearly, being enabled, um, LG has some custom software on here, which I'm probably going to dislike. I tend to. Um, but, again, not going to pass judgment on it too early. So, let's see what they've got going on here. Um, I'm going to get everything off the home screen. And then we'll have a look at their widgets. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven home screens. And first thing I'm going to want to do for widgets is get into the marketplace and double check um, all the specs in from Quadrant so let me do that real quick My keyboard already feels really good And while that is loading up, you can see up here um, you've got toggles, quick toggles for volume, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, GPS, and airplane mode, which is handy. In fact, I'll turn on Bluetooth right here. And hop on my network. Let's see, I don't think that went through. Okay, maybe it did. So, up here, we're going to get Quadrant real quick. And just in case you're worrying, we do have a full Quadrant Pro license, so there's no worries about uh, displaying this stuff on our video here, but I am going to install the standard edition just for ease of use for the time being. So Quadrant's ready to roll here, and I'm not going to run a full benchmark for you right at this moment, but I do want to look at the information here. Uh, see what sensors we've got. So this is uh, an ARM V7 processor, 1024 megahertz, uh, as we thought. This is Snapdragon specifically. Uh, one core. Let's see any surprises here? Let's see if it has any information about the GPU. OK, 
I don't see anything about the GPU just yet, but I can see that we have compass. Uh, let's see, two different types of compass, proximity light. Uh, so there's no um, gyroscope in this. Um, it doesn't seem. And, all right, so that's all we'll get out of Quadrant for now. We'll run a benchmark later. See that the Flash 10.3 just installed, so that gives us a good opportunity to jump into the browser and figure out how well it does with Flash. Now that is, if I can find the browser, here it is. So I'm going to try to pull up a video in line real quick. Trying to full screen it at the moment. And it is not liking me. There we go. So it's running quite sluggishly, which is not not a good thing. And I'll be lucky if I can ever close this ad. That'll never happen. <laughs> so there's some issues with flash, as you can see, on tiny screens like this. Um, and I want to load up a better video uh, with a little more action in it. Okay, here we've got a decent video running 360p, so we'll see how this does. Except again, I will never, ever be able to get <laughs> these controls. Oh, there we go. So this looks pretty smooth, um, except it is in 360 see what happens once we turn it up. It's looking really good right now though. See if we can get it up to 480.
No, it's just absolutely not going... Oh, there it is. <laughs> just likes to prove me wrong. So, okay, even if it does work at 480, you are going to have a hard time getting it there. Well, that's just plain old frustrating. There we go, 480. And looking pretty good again. See if I can get it up to 720. Okay, here's 720. And it's looking really good. I'm impressed with this right now. A little stutter here and there, but overall it's running pretty smooth. So, flash, not so bad on here, uh, but I'd be excited to give this a try with HDMI out, um, get some YouTube videos going on the big screen. So folks, this has been Ben from CarryPad.com with the LG Revolution, Verizon's third 4G smartphone, and I thank you guys for watching, encourage you to come visit us at CarryPad.com. For more info on this phone, and please stay tuned as we're going to be having a lot more coverage and a full review for this device. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day.